days, I'm going to Hiroshima for the Asian Championships. My name is Philip Warren Gertsen. I'm 32 years old. I'm a football freestyler. I've been freestyling for about 17 years now, and uh, I have no, no will to quit right now. No, 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 I don't do it. The reason I don't want to quit is, is not only because I'm passionate about what I do, but also because I feel like I've come so far that I don't want to give the, all of that up. But if I didn't compete, and I still would train the same amount, would I still have that spark to actually go train, even though I have that routine in me? And I'm just afraid that it will take away that little spark that I have. Sixteen years ago, I decided to uh, set myself a goal, set myself a routine, that I would train at least three hours on average every day. So, 21 hours a week I would train. And it's something that I still do to this day. Well, I try to do my best at least. Even when I'm at my lowest low when it comes to motivation, those 21 hours and thinking back to what I actually trained for um, back in 2008, 2009, that, that is what keeps me going. started back in 2006, you weren't just training for a goal, you were just training because it was fun. And I feel like I've had the same type of mindset for the past 17 years. So even though I know that there's a competition coming up, I might not put the same effort into being consistent at all of the tricks that I feel like I should have. Um, just because I want to be able to go here, this is my safe space and just go train whatever I feel like. It's not easy being a freestyler in his 30s, right? I'm in a bit of a limbo when it comes to the balance between freestyle and regular life. About balancing everything financially. Balancing, oh, do I spend all my money traveling to Japan to compete or do I actually invest in my freestyle brand? Or do I save the money so that I can buy a house where I can create my own training spot so that I can push my level even higher or you know do I think short term or do I think long term and how long is long term I always tell myself after Super Bowl this is the year where I spend a full year focusing on training and I do but I drift away from the goal so much because there are so many other things that are taking up time. I just don't know if it's worth going for or not. And I can't justify doing either, so I'm doing both. As of right now, I'm very split between going all in on a competition, spending like a year just focusing on that, and just quitting competitive freestyle for good.
change my life if I spent half a year focusing on, a, on one competition or two competitions compared to how would it change my life if I'm enjoying myself with what I do but I also have to you know pay bills pay rent you know life happens and I know freestyle is my life but there's also life after freestyle and I had to create myself a pension plan when it comes to freestyle because we can't freestyle or compete forever. And I also, I also want to see how, how old can I be and still be in the top. Like, like almost like an experiment. It's a little bit of a vanity thing there because when it, for me, when it comes to free cell history, there is a lot of big names that have been forgotten that we don't talk about anymore. There's a lot of new generation freestylers that don't know about, you know, the, the big old legends from the old days, right? Um, so some people don't even know who Pale is, which is for me insane, right? But I also don't want to be the guy that is forgotten about in 20 years. I, want, I still want people to remember what I did for the community. Not, you know, because of what I did in competitions, but what I did for the community. What I did for freestyle, what I did for, you know, trick-wise, for example. Welcome to the uh, humble abode that is also called the Revolution Warehouse slash where I stash all of my stuff. As you can probably see, I have a lot of stuff, matchballs, boots, uh, shirts. Um, I keep it here, uh, but right now it's really, really messy because I'm currently like moving around a bunch of stuff and uh, trying to figure out where to keep everything. In 2009, I started asking people like who hired me for shows for football clubs if I could get a shirt from the club that I performed at. Um, and all these bucks are basically momentums of uh, shows that I've done. Hardcore combo, bro. You know, good old freestyle memories. Um, yeah, I don't want to bore you with all of the all of these stuff, but this is one of my one of my favorites. I've never worn it. I don't like it, but this is the official merch of Polish Freestyle uh, Freestyle LG uh, for the competition in Przyszczyce in 2009 that I actually won. It was the first competition that I won, and this is the merch that they made for it and looking back I mean it's not the best you know merch but you know we had to start somewhere right and I think it's really cool to see what freestyle has become and where we started and you know looking back at all the roots all of these three boxes four boxes just filled with memorabilia that you know that I remember stories of and that I have, you know, fond memories of. So all of this is completely worthless for anyone else but me. But it's a nice memory to have with you, you know, going forward with my freestyle life. So we're about one week one week, eight days away from uh, Asian champs in Hiroshima. Uh, mentally, in the mindset that I'm in right now, it doesn't feel like I'm going to a competition because I didn't decide that I was actually going to this competition until 
two days ago. I still feel like I have something to show, not something to prove, but something to show. And I feel like going to Hiroshima for the Asian Champs is the perfect, you know, opportunity to do that. The Asian Freestyle Football Champion is... I have two Asian titles. I've lost three finals. On two of them, I think it was a bit on the edge. But the third one, I lay down my hands and say, Kosuke absolutely killed that one. He just showed that he was a better freestyler that day and he deserved that win. And I wasn't mad at all. But I feel like I'm in a decent shape. I feel like I can do well, I can do some damage. So it's good to be back on that stage and um, trying to get that title back. So all of these magnets are for my trips after 2016, I think, uh, where I gave a magnet to my grandma every trip that I was away. And then when she passed away last year, I got all of the magnets back and I kept on, you know, buying new ones wherever I went to a new city. So um, any favorites? Obviously, like memories wise, the one in Davao when I went to the Philippines and I won the Asian Champs 2016, um, Canada, um, Calgary, the competition in 2016, that was the first magnet I bought um, out of this collection. Um, but yeah, like this whole fridge is just filled with, you know, a bunch of memories. So whenever I see, look at this, I, you know, it wakes up a memory in the back of my head and, you know, I feel blessed and really happy to see where freestyle has actually gotten me because all of this is just freestyle trips. Interact like we've known each other for years. That's um, 
you know, language barrier is a problem, but just saying yabai when someone does, does something good, you know, the interaction just flourishes that way. The thing with the Japanese community is that it's kind of, it's kind of very uh, close together. Everyone interacts with each other and everyone's open to, to new people. So if you come from abroad, come to Japan and jam with the Japanese guys, they will appreciate you. They will um, invite you to the meets. Um, you know, some people even invite you to their homes and stuff like that. So it's very, very close, but it's something that is universal for the freestyle community, but it's really special in Japan. It is. They're listening to Swedish rap in Japan. I've never even heard this song. It's amazing. The culture just <laughs> love it. here immaculate the best you got supermarket ice you got amazing freestylers the vibes are just insane Japanese rap Japanese beats but uh, I feel like I'm enjoying the vibes more than I'm enjoying preparing for the competition which I should be doing but I'm just following following along with the stream here of the immaculate vibes here in Japan so I'm enjoying myself more than I should I don't know what time it is, it's past six at least, but uh, we were very, very, very politely thrown out of this area right here. But we were told that we can train downstairs, so that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, the guys have been training for a little bit longer than I have, so they're pretty tired, but they said that they're willing to train more. So, really, really, really thankful for the Japanese guys for that one. So, let's go downstairs. This place is amazing. We just uh, occupied like a, a badminton court. They removed the net and now we can train here, we can play music. The really like street vibes of Japan just turned into like the really sporty vibes. But the music's still here, the boys are still here. It doesn't feel like they're preparing for a competition in two days. It feels more like they're just in, enjoying themselves, um, exchanging experiences. And I feel like that's what freestyle is about and kind of how the Japanese freestyle culture and the scene is just so different. Love it. Yeah. They barely speak English. I, I don't speak Japanese, but we're using Google Translate, hand gestures, 
and uh, like leg gestures to show like move ideas and stuff like that and I think that this is what it's all about. Ah, fish. No man. So tomorrow, jam. Ah, uh, what? What time? Two. Oh, okay. okay. It's okay. Next to train. Uh, train station. This next to ah yes next to okay okay ah okay 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 tomorrow tomorrow now Reta station yes station okay now see you tomorrow station ah no no okay see you tomorrow So we just uh, just finished eating, and uh, the WFA guys reached out to me and asked if we wanted to join them for for dinner. And we said we just finished eating, but we can join them after. Apparently, they were 120 meters away. So here we are. We saw a, a big beard over there, and they saw my ball holder. So apparently, it's all good in the hood. Why are you both here? Why are you here? <laughs> Good to see you, Daniel. Hello, mate. Good to see you. Perfect, mate. Huh? You have to go on your toes to hug you, me, huh? Oh. What is happening? They wanted to see freestyle. So now the bar is unmanned. <laughs> no drinks. I, uh, yeah, so for the next five minutes, no drinks. But don't drink too fast because you're not going to get one, a new one. <laughs> Stop the traffic. No hands. It's just I feel like in Japan they appreciate freestyle. Like, if I was to perform in Sweden, they would never be amazed like this. Just like, oh, can you show us some skills? It's more like, my cousin's better than you. <laughs> I can do that on the field. Yes. And always something to like counteract the, the you know the skill. Oh wow. That was good fun. That was uh, like 40 seconds of fun, yeah. No, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, you did good. Uh, Very well. I got the good advertising. We were just randomly walking down the street to uh, to the freestyle meeting, and then we just saw. Wait, it says judges. That's that's weird. Uh, and apparently, this is where the event is. Oh, good. How are you? I expected it to be inside, and I expected it to be smaller. And now we've got a huge stage right in front of a huge mall. It looks super professional. Really looking forward to that. And I just can't wait to step on stage and show the people what I got. I'm just gonna try out the stage. It looks too good to not be uh, freestyled on. Uh, what's this? 
Nice to meet you. Philip. Ben, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Philip. Shuto. I'm Philip. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Mukumi? Mukumi. Mukumi. Mukumi ga tomaranai. Mukumi ga tomaranai. Welcome to Japan. <laughs> I think there's been like 30 people here today, um, mainly Japanese, Japanese freestylers, obviously. Um, we've got one freestyler, Tony Ma from Hong Kong. We've got a whole crew, like Cat crew from, uh, from South Korea. Just straight up great freestyle all throughout the, the whole day. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, yesterday we trained. Yeah, I know. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> look at me drink. Look at me drink. Yeah. Uh, so we have been here a couple of hours, and, you know, the atmosphere doesn't doesn't scream the fact that there's a big competition tomorrow. And I don't know if I should be concerned, but um, that might change for tomorrow. Sweet time. Sweet time. Sweet time. Sweet time. We go uh, Kokuich. <laughs> ah, curry? Curry, yes, yes, yes. Yuri? Normal. Normal, normal, yeah. <laughs> Me? Spicy. Oh, spicy. Level. Level, level. What do you have? Oh, hey. Wow, very hot, very spicy. No, it's no? <laughs> the best. Yeah, the best? Yes. Wow. Yes, that's right. No. Not before a competition. <laughs> <laughs> because then tomorrow. But you can so many sweats. It's good for the warming up. <laughs> I think also the, the weather is good for warming up. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow, if it's rainy, we, we can try to do the uh, spicy ramen. Yes. <laughs> uh. Preparations hasn't been perfect, but at the same time, I feel like I'm I'm good enough to win this. Let's get it. See you tomorrow. All right. So first of all. Thank you very much for coming. It's incredible to see uh, so many freestylers from, uh, uh, from Asia. Each of you, after the circle, will receive the points from our judges. And that's going to determine your ranking for the next battles. Yeah, so from each circle, top two are going straight to top 32 battles. Because after that, we go to one-on-one -on -one battles, and that's you know it, guys. You're one of the best nations uh, in, in the world for the battles. Uh, I know today is going to be a little bit hot, but in two hours we have this shade coming and after two hours we are going to be good. So uh, just getting ready, we're starting the battles in 20 minutes. Uh, but I'm the last qualification circle. I have my notes, but the notes are not written in stone. So many things can change in a matter of seconds, so I'm as prepared as I, I can be without being, like having my mind full of just battle sets. So the tricks are down, I just need to uh, combine them in a good way.
biggest threats, top four. So Jay, Hiroke, Yuri, and then Aki. So I obviously want a revenge on Hiroke for beating me in 2018 in the Asian Finals. I, I still feel it. I still feel a lot of pain from that battle because I think I deserve to win that one. But just we go again and hopefully I'll get my revenge today. Uh, it's hot. It's really, really hot. Okay, got a high score. One more battle, then it's me. I'm ready. I feel ready. So I just gotta do my thing. it up in the last round I dropped it I burnt myself uh, first two rounds felt really good but the last round was absolutely garbage I was going for the three rev touched it low score for me I'm actually kind of disappointed in the last round the first two rounds went like smooth like butter it was perfect but fuck man the third round So, the battles are out, the schedule is out, um, I got ranked second, um, and I'm up against Daiki, the Clipper guy. So it's going to be fun on stage, see how much Clippers we can do. Yeah, he had a lot of clippers, a lot of clipper stuff. 
which I couldn't respond to because you know his level was that high in Clippers. But I responded with other things. But uh, you know, doing our best, we respond to each other, having the good vibes on stage, uh, having fun, and uh, interacting with each other on stage as well. That's what a freestyle battle is all about, in my opinion. Next up is Leon. Leon is tough, man. He's got a similar style to, to me, but uh, it's going to be an interesting matchup. Now it's important to keep calm, uh, give him a good battle without, without doing all the best. But if I feel like I'm pressured, I can bust out one or two like straight from the bag. So got to be prepared, and I feel like I am. You know what? If the chance comes, chance comes up, I'll drag myself out of retirement just to battle you. <laughs> two more battles. No matter what happens, two more battles. Semi-final, and then final or battle for third place. And I'm up against Hiroke from Japan. I need my revenge. I lost against Hiroke in the Asian final 2018. Now I need, my, need to get my revenge back. That's for sure.
Sharing the stage with Hero K again. It's, uh, it's amazing. I got my revenge finally. Right. Rightfully. Taking back, back what's rightfully mine. That battle. So, now it's the final against Jay. Exciting, but difficult. I don't know how much gas I got left in this tank, but... You just go for gold. There's no way. I'm turning back now. I did everything right, okay. everything right, right up until the final. The first place goes to... I still have huge respect for anyone who competed today, especially obviously for Jay for, for pulling through with the win. But I might look back at this in 10 years and think, why the fuck did I even care? Because it might not make a difference in 10 years. But it just feels horrible right now. And I don't want anyone to feel pity for me or anything. I just want to show people what it's like to be the first loser. It fucking sucks. We're gonna have one last freestyle jam, but before I go back home, there's this one place I need to visit. This is Zojoji Temple, and that's Tokyo Tower. So, 10 years ago, almost exactly 10 years ago, in September 2013, Red Bull Street Style happened right here. Here we go, Geo against PWG. Coming back here brings up a lot of memories. You know, all in all, it was one of the best experiences of my life. You know, going to Japan for the first time, meeting Japanese freestylers, being able to uh, perform 
you know, at such a cool location, a cool venue. Um, you know, the competition being broadcasted worldwide to, you know, hundreds of thousands of people. <sighs> it's a special place in my heart. So 10 years ago, there were so many legends here at this spot in this competition. So many legends were made, legendary battles created, legendary moments happened. I remember I lost in the quarterfinals uh, to Takura, obviously his home turf. Uh, so I had all, everyone against me, but um, uh, Takura is not competing anymore. Uh, I beat Gio from Mexico in top 16. I don't think he's competing anymore. I had Charlie from Argentina. I don't think he's competing anymore. Gunther, Italy, not competing anymore. This is also where uh, Bex pulled out, I think it was four pallets in a combo, in a battle with a 4.5 size ball in a battle, it's, it's crazy. Even if you see like four pallets in a combo in a battle right now, 10 years later, it's still insanely impressive. And Bex also not competing anymore. Uh, but I feel like there's too many people who just quit, just vanish from the freestyle community, not even involved anymore. Um, I don't want that to happen to me. I might be the last old school battler left. I still wanna, you know, show my style, show how, you know, the old dogs in the game do it. You know, I looked up to a bunch, well, I still look up to a bunch of the older legends like Tuzani, Mr. Wu, uh, Pale, Tom Carlson, freestyles like that. And they were the older, older generation. And when we came to the scene, we were the new generations and they taught me how to do freestyle their way. And I had a different mindset, different view on freestyle. And uh, we changed experiences and exchanged um, our, th our thoughts on freestyle. And I think that made both of us, like both of the generations, um, better in their own way. And I just wanna be able to, to pass on like my knowledge onto the next generation. There's a lot of history that is forgotten. There's a lot of freestylers that has been forgotten. A lot of freestylers have fell into obscurity. A lot of freestylers that um, people don't know by name. Uh, people don't know where tricks came from. People don't know who created this or that, who created or who made this trick or move famous. Um, I want to keep the integrity of that. I want to keep the, the respect to the names of the older guys because there's so much that has been forgotten. Yeah, I have to. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <it's> <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> oh, my, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Open the window! Open the window! Yo, it's so cool. 
Gori, one of the freestylers that we trained with in Hiroshima, actually organized a meeting here one and a half hour outside of Tokyo. And it's just great to see that in every single city there is a freestyle community. So if you, you know, if you want to train, there is a possibility for you to train. The plan was to be at the beach today, but it's a bit windy by the beach today, so. Close enough, am I right? And this broken shoe racer. If you want to be remembered in freestyle, it's not only about the competitions, it's about everything else as well. Videos, how you are at meetings, um, how you behave yourself towards other freestylers, are you a friendly person, stuff like that. But there's, you know, you can still be forgotten. That's why, for example, I try to tell the story about all the old school freestylers that quit in 2008, 2009. The, the freestylers that, that, um, that shaped me as a freestyler back in the days, that were my inspirations. And hopefully, like, I want to be one of those people that could inspire other people to then inspire other people. You know, I don't want freestyle inspiration to end here. <laughs>